So welcome to this video about Google Sheet data and loading it into ClickSense using the REST API. This is not a beginner's exercise. And there is another video of mine where it is much simpler using the Click Web Connector package. So why would you do this then? You may be a user of ClickCloud.com where there is no Web Connector package, or you may have no license for or no package containing the Click Web Connector. So that's why. So what we will be doing in this video are the following steps. Preparing the Google project and the credentials, getting a refresh token with OAuth Playground, then setting up the REST data connections in ClickSense. I'm going to use the ClickSense Cloud Edition, and then loading the raw data from Google Sheets REST API and transforming it into the app. So I'm assuming you have already a Google Sheet with data, and in my case, I have this lovely sheet here. Um, so the next thing we're going to set up is the project. Let's go to console.developers.google.com and create a new project. I call this Google Sheet 2, and um, next I will enable an API. So I click here, search for the sheet, Google Sheets API. It gives a little information here. It says API is enabled. So the next thing is um, going back to the overview, go to credentials, and we will create a new OAuth client ID. So choose web application for this. As a redirect URI, we have to put something because when we later will use the playground, we will use our own OAuth credentials. So it tells you you will need the following URI as a redirect URI in the OAuth setup. And that's what we are doing here. Create it. And then I will note down the client ID to put this into um, a notepad. And here is the client secret. And next is Google Playground. So when you go to Playground and into the settings, we will copy and paste the OAuth client ID and secret into the settings over there. You can leave the rest as default. And now we will play through the steps. So we want to test the Sheets API. And there are different endpoints, so-called scopes, that we have to define. So I want to use the spreadsheets read only, authorize the API. Now I need to give my consent as a user and owner of the spreadsheet. You can ignore this warning. That should be OK. And the next step. It gave me an authorization code, which ClickSense doesn't need, but, but what I need is the refresh token. So click on exchange authorization for tokens. And now we have got, uh, I will need to go back to step two to see it, a refresh token. That is important because the access token will change every 3,600 seconds at the latest, but the refresh token will be the same. So note down the refresh token, and now we can also test it on the last step. The method we want to test here is under list possible operations. It's the last one that says spreadsheets values range. We have to provide now the spreadsheet ID, which is the part in the middle without the slashes. So that is the spreadsheet ID, and that 
I want to get the whole sheet number one, which has the name form responses one. That is what I need to provide here as the range. So instead of the spreadsheet ID, put in the values and instead of range, let's put form responses one. But you have to uh, use uh, URI encoding for spaces and space is represented by percent 20. Just be aware of this. And now when sending the request, I will get back the data as a array of values. So now we're all good. We're all set um, and we move over to the next step and setting is up in ClickSense. So I go to Click Cloud, log, log in. I will show you the script that I have prepared to make life easy. You can find it under data and go to the load editor. Basically, when you create a new connection and you go to rest, it only allows you to close the dialog if this is a valid connection. So what I recommend to do is make one generic GET request and use a fake URL for this and make one generic POST request also with a fake URL. So we just need to get over the dialog. And what I found pretty funny here is uh, called adjacent placeholder.unicode.com where it basically allows you to uh, make a simple REST call and it can also be a POST call as you can see here. So let's try this and put this here, uh, choose method get uh, as an authentication scheme, use anonymous. Okay, let's call it get request. Now use the second one, set up the rest post request. And this goes like post and method post. Um, again, anonymous authentication scheme creates. So these two requests we will not use as the way configured now. So we will not touch this JSON placeholder fake API again, because we will use script parameters to parameterize our REST call. And now let's see the Google Sheets API setup. So now I need again all the information in this part of the script where it reads Google Sheet ID. Let's copy all this over. The client secret and the refresh token. So the rest you can leave as given because the Google token API won't change. This is the call to get a new token. And the next call is actually to retrieve the data from the spreadsheet. So I'm computing here the, the correct URL. As you remember, that's exactly what we have, what we have done here in the request URI. That's almost it. Yeah, now let's, let's now insert the post request that we have configured before. If you would not put with connection here, it would go back to the fake API and pull some fake data. But because I'm providing a full specification from where to pull, what query strings to provide, what HTTP header to provide, I'm actually diverting the original configured post request to whatever I specify here. So this is the key here. So let's go down where uh, it says get request and also replace this with our generic new get request. I'm specifying the URL here and I'm providing the token that I've just received in the steps above. I will be getting my Google Sheet data. So now for the time being, let's exit the script here for, uh, for a moment to see what's going to happen. So it got one line from the auth token. It retrieved successfully a new token 
And then I'm using this together with the GET request and I'm receiving 72 lines. So the only issue you have now is that the array is coming with each value in a new row. So like timestamp, all the field names have row number one and they go down till the row number one is over and then continue with row number two and so on. And I've created that column number myself. So the row number is something I get from um, the REST connector. And this repeats 12, 13 times. And if it changes, I'm resetting and then incremental numbering um, or incoming data rows as a field named call number. Never mind if you don't understand this, you can just use it as given. So the last thing I'm doing here is actually transforming the, the data. So let's load again and finish after this step. And it's actually loading and left joining all the different rows into different columns now and giving them good names. So from the raw data, which is this, it created a nice data format like this, which happens to be exactly the original table I got in Google Sheets. So now you are free to do anything else you used to do with ClickSense on top of it. I hope you liked this video and that it gives you some ideas on working with Google REST APIs and ClickSense script. See you in the next video.